Hear me, Kotliners. I was once in a trip to Kotlin Island. And I was tempted by the mermaids. You know, I wanted to have data classes. Val everywhere. Immutability, they were singing, you know. Don't mutate. It's bad. By the way, I found that's, that's like the mermaid according to Wikipedia. So we're, we're going to be fine with that. Um, but, as always, the mermaid turned into a monster. And suddenly, every time I had to do anything, I had copy of copy of copy of copy of yes. How many times do I have to write person dot to change the age and, well, capitalize, and I know what you're going to tell me, because the compiler always tells me that's deprecated. I know. Fine. OK, we are fine uh, with that. But why no we know we are a clever bunch of people, so we can do better. But like Plato and Aristotle and you know all these fancy Greeks we thought that mermaids were birds, uh, they were super clever, uh, there was this Two kinds of people it was the copycat people and the arrow people. That's a bit like I wanted to bring, like, you know, like the there are many types of ideas and so on. Well, and that's actually what, what my talk is about how we can use this to. Uh, do you miss the, the performance? Uh, how you can use copycat and arrow optics to have nicer immutability, because we like immutability. I think that after you know, a few decades of trying to handle mutable state, we came to the conclusion that uh, if we just do things immutable by default, code tends to be more maintainable, more readable, but we still have the problem that the terrible monster was showing us. We have a lot of repetition. We have to fit over and over. So what are some of these ideas? Well, let me start with, with Copycat. And Copycat is a small compiler plugin which creates its own version of copy. But within this copy, it's like you have a mutable scope where you can mutate. You can do as if your, uh, your thing was mutable, right? You can just say H++. It's like, you know, H is now incremented. Or you can change the street. So you don't really have to repeat all of this. And at the end of this, you will get back a copied uh, version where all of this has been mutated. So that's, that's great, because we just use the same syntax that everybody knows and love for variables, right? What is simpler for incrementing than H++? Uh, that's what everybody just gets. That's like, we are incrementing the H. It has some not so great things. In order to have this right now, we need uh, code generation. And this is done using KSP. So it roughly doubles the size of your data classes, because, well, it's essentially creating mutable versions, which uh, uses under the hood. And uh, what is maybe not so great, it does, in order to do so, it needs to create a copy of the object when you start the mutable scope, then you change the stuff, right? And then you have to freeze it again. We need to actually create the copy. And this sometimes uh, takes quite some time, especially if your things contain lists, sequences, and all of that. So that's, that's problematic. But as I said, the nice thing is that now we can use a copy with nice syntax for variables. The other big uh, line of thinking in this, in this solving the mutability problem is arrow optics. And arrow optics kind of tries to look at things from the other side. What you notice here is that uh, instead of having uh, the name of the field I want to change uh, after the person I want to change, we do it in the other, in the other, uh, in the other order. And the idea is that now we are going to have these references to fields. These are the things we call optics. And by composing those, we can actually have a nicer uh, syntax to do all of this. So for example, we have, uh, again, a, another copy function. 
But now this copy function with allows you to do is say, well, you give me a mutable reference, and then what you should do in this point, and then I will perform all those modifications for you. Or if you want just to do one small thing, you can use this modifier, which allows you to change whatever value was already there, which if you use the regular copy in data class, that essentially forces you to write down again the whole thing you wanted to modify. So using these mutable references, uh, we get a quite powerful framework. Now you can, of course, say, OK, where are these mutable references uh, coming from? Well, again, from code generation using KSP. So unfortunately, I don't think there is now a good solution to this problem which doesn't involve code generation of roughly double the size of all your data classes. But well, it looks a bit like this. You have a data class, you have name and age, and then you put this at optic. And then, well, all these field references are generated for you, and then you can use them within this framework uh, to manipulate things. What is really nice about Arrow Optics is that it's not only for fields. This is a whole uh, framework for data transformation. So for example, the same idea of copying is essentially the same idea as we have for a map, right? A map is nothing else as copying a list to perform some modification over each element. So Arrow Optic takes this idea and applies the idea of mutable references in a uniform way. So I can just use the same modify thing I had before, but now operating on a list of, of friends, except that now what I use this is this thing called every dot list, which is the mutable reference, which refers to each element within a list. So by doing this, you get a bigger uh, framework. It, of course, now you need to know the framework. But once you get this, you actually get quite some power by doing so. Now what I would really, 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 really love to do is, and I, I say this because I know there might be some JetBrains people here, so listen carefully. Uh, you know, now we have properties, right? We can have references to properties. And we also have mutable property, which is a reference to a property we can also set. But what if we also had some kind of copyable property where this copier you know, it's there, was given to us by the compiler, we could actually sort of uh, have most of this Arrow Optics framework, but from the compiler. And I think this will actually uh, solve most of the problem of having to generate all this code. Because at the end of the day, the copy is there. We can reuse it, but because you know, it's, it's hard to dig in, uh, then we are forced to generate all this code. Well, that was essentially it. So uh, I like Arrow. Uh, so come talk to us uh, if, if you want. Uh, we are a happy bunch of people. Uh, but yeah, that was it. Thank you. I will be delighted to take any questions. And don't forget to vote positively. Otherwise, just stay done doing that. Option do you use yourself? Uh, which option do you use yourself? The copycat or the arrow optics? <laughs> In a weird turn of events, I maintain both libraries but don't really use it that much. I, most of the time, uh, if I'm introducing something, I introduce uh, arrow optics, and that's mostly because the team I work with, well, most of them. Uh, maintainers of Arrow, so they know about this stuff. So it's like the, it's for us. Weirdly enough, is the least friction thing. So that that's mostly what what we uh, what we use. So I I for myself, I think that getting the extra power of all this extra transformation is worth it uh, because I already know kind of the framework. So that that that's my choice. Yeah, um, how do you handle uh, nested objects uh, with copycat? If you, yeah. Yeah, so uh, essentially what 
copycat does under the hood is creating a mutable version of your class. Uh, so if you have, uh, if you have uh, a value and then we detect that you also use copycat over it, and essentially we do this by having an annotation saying, oh, that's the mutable version of the other thing, then we also use it there. So that, that's also where the unfortunate time is spent in freezing, right? Because uh, copying one single data thing, which, uh, how many fields are you going to have in your data class? You know, uh, 20, 100, whatever. Uh, it's going to be fast. But once, if you do this, the whole thing, then you have to do the whole uh, object until the end and then freeze it back. And that's actually where, where the problem uh, comes from. But th that's how we handle this. We just if you have a nested thing which has a mutable version, we use the mutable version in the mutable version of the bigger thing. OK, thanks. Um, in your opinion, would it be better to, for the Kotlin folks to take this issue into their own hands and provide one solution for everybody, or keep it as a choice? Like so I said I would love that they include some of this thing. I think like the copyable thing would be like one thing I love because then we could redo arrow optics, which is a library I really love. But uh, uh, I think that uh, right now we kind of have copy working in a very nice way, but that's just like a very clever design, right? It just happened to create a copy thing where we have named argument which are called exactly like the other things, right? And I would, I would really love that they would take the time and say, look, this is, this is its own thing, uh, changing immutable data, and, and then come with a solution, which could be as simple as saying, copy is a special method, and if I write a person.name inside of it, then it knows what I want to do, right? I want to change that field. I don't, I don't, it doesn't force me to do the, the copy thing. So it, won't, it will make it less orthogonal, because as I said, the copy now is a very clever solution based on several stuff. But I think that this is, at least for me, when I do this kind of uh, programming, so problematic that I even you know, uh, build stuff to, to get around it. Thanks. Fast, fast, we only have two six, two five, two four, go. Um, does the copycat solution have any runtime performance impacts? So the runtime performance of copycat is the fact that when you go into a mutable scope, you, uh, we right now copy the thing. Uh, as I said, could become very costly because it can have nested objects, and at the end, we uh, we freeze the thing. We essentially go back to the to the non mutable version again by copying the whole thing. So that's that's the main runtime performance. Uh, in an I mean in an ideal world, or we have uh, enough time, of course, would be to look at the copy block and then generate the code which changes this. But the solution which have now, which works generally, has this downside, which is all these performance issues. Yeah. And when you say um, it has an impact, is it a significant impact? I mean, would it? Would you? Would you put that code in like a critical part of your application? To be honest, I I haven't measured, so I don't. My my feeling is that you never copy something so big that this will have a big performance. Having said so, uh, I don't also do the kind of programming where you have a big thing. I don't know if maybe you have a big data class, which is your state in an Android application with uh, a lot of nested things. This may have a performance. And the kind of application I do, which are mostly uh, backend, so it's like you know, th small things you transform and then you just give back, no problem. But yeah. Uh, one more question. Um, does IntelliJ struggle at all with the uh, arrow implementation of optics, or does it just work really nice? So the struggles in both cases are the same, and they are from the fact that both are implementing using KSP. And KSP is not 
super well integrated with IntelliJ, so you can make it work uh, by essentially saying it will generate code and then uh, make it like an extra input to your thing. Then it works, right? And so at that point it works. So it's uh, like a one-time uh, penalty for you to set up the project uh, accordingly. Then, then for it, it's, it's just regular code. It just sees the main problem if you are using IntelliJ is that sometimes if you do something wrong, you will see the uh, terrible code we are generating with, uh, you know, like, uh, but yeah, that's, that, that might come in your error messages. Cool, thank you. Time is out, yes.